hello everyone. I'm honored to be invited to attend the International Conference on Crypto Matthew and uh, Information Security. My article was accepted. The title of my article is a multi sector certificate authenticated key agreement protocol on ECC. My name is Jing Tang, and uh, the report is mainly divided into five parts, namely the research background, the basic knowledge, and our protocol, the, secret, the security proof, and the summary. Let's start from explain the research background first. In a traditional public key crypt cryptography, be shorted to PKC, certificates are needed to assure users of the relationship between a public key and its corresponding private key holder's identity. This gives rise to problems in certificate management including revocation, storage, and the distribution. To address these issues, Shamil introduced the concept of identity-based encryption, IDPKC. A user's public key can be derived from their identity, for example, their name or email address, while their key is generated, generated by a key generation center the KGC. But then comes the new problem, the issue of the key is clue, because the key generation center knows all users' secret key. In 2003, El Riyami proposed certificate list public key crypto cryptography, CLPKC, to solve the key is clue problem. Many certificate list authentication key agreement protocols, which were shorted to CLAKA using linear, bilinear mapping on ellipt elliptic curves have been proposed. However, the relative computa com computational cost of a bilinear op operation period is about three times higher than scalar multiplication on elliptic curve groups. Therefore, peri frame protocols are more attractive in terms of efficiency. These protocols have encountered some security issues and researchers proposed models to Generalize the safety problem, mainly including the MBR module and the ECK module. Because the MBR module is more comprehensive and has higher security requirements than the ECK model, so we choose the MBR module in security proof. Due to various problems with single and the double factor authentic authenticated key exchange protocol, multi factor authenticated key exchange has gradually become a research hotspot. Compared with traditional authentication factors, biometric characteristics have advantages such as uniqueness. Difficulty in guessing or cloning, difficulty in loss and forgery, which can provide more reliable protection, protection for identity authentication. Therefore, many multi factor authentication protocols, including biometrics, have been proposed. However, these existing multi factor key exchange schemes are only used locally to unlock keys distrib distributed by trusted third parties. Essentially, whoever owns the distributed key can impersonate the key's user. It cannot resist 
internal privilege attack. This is very little, there's very little research on sophisticated exchange schemes using multi-sector authentication technology. And they all choose to generate an authentication key by combining by, com by combining multiple authentication factors. It can not achieve real multi-sector joint And our article proposed a multi-factor catalyst key negotiation scheme. The communication entity can choose different identity authentication factors, which is more autonomous and flexible. The proposed scheme has low computational overhead without the bilinear pairing operation, and has been proven to be secure under the MDR model. The second part of the report is an introduction to basic knowledge. Here is the list of the description of notations used in this article. And the symbol EFQ denotes an ellipt elliptic half E or a prime finite field FQ defined by a uh, equation and uh, the com com computation no, the Behrman problem means give a generator P of a group G and give the set of uh, A scalar multiply P, B scalar multiply P for unknown A and B from the set. The task of the CDH problem is to compute the A times B and the scalar multiply P. The, the division for computation Diffie-Hellman problem means give a generator P of the G and the AP, BP for the unknown A and B from the set. The task of the DCDH problem is to compute the modular inverse of A times B and the scalar multiply the P. There are two times of the of adversaries against a CLAKA protocol. The type one adversary A1 can query the query the user's secret value and even replace the user's public key, but cannot obtain the user's partial private key. The type two adversary can obtain the master secret key of the system and query the user's private key but cannot obtain the user's secret value and cannot replace user's public key. The ability of, of two kinds of adversaries of A is simulated by some queries with the challenger C. A certificatory authentication key agreement protocols is said to be secure if it meets two conditions. Condition one, in the presence of a benign adversary form, and both oracles always agree on the same session key. And this key is distribu distributed uniformly at random. Condition two, for any adversary, the advantage of the adversary is ne negligible. negligible. The third part of the report is the description of our protocol. The first one, initializing phase. The key, the key generation center, KGC, selects an elliptical path E and defines all applied fields and the curve has a second point group E of the point order Q. And the, the P is the generation the generator of the group C. Step two, KGC choose the master private key S from the set and compute the master public key P pop is equal to the S scalar multiplied P. 
step three, KDC choose two hash functions, H1 and H2 for some integer. And step four, the KGC publishes the system parameter and secretly keeps the master key of S. Phase two, the user registration phase. First, we set the secret value. The user UI takes multiple identity authentication factors as his secret values. Our scheme takes pin codes and uh, biometric fingerprints. The scheme supports the use of multi multiple devices on jointly complete identity authentication. Here we use three mobile device as examples for explanation. Enter the user, enter the pin code the, we denote as lowercase c1 on mobile device one. Enter the fingerprint and the generation and the generate the c2 through fancy extraction. And compute the capital C1, capital C2 through the through the computation, and uh, then the user sends the information C1, C2, and IDI to the K, to the KGC. Then is the partial private key is extract. The KGC on receiving the information from the user, it checks the valid it checks the IDI and choose at a random RI from the set com and compute the capital RI, VI and uh, WI. Then it uh, computes the lambda I and uh, C0. After all the comp computation, it sends the message WI, RI and uh, C0 to the user. And uh, the lowercase C0 is the partial private key of the UI. Then is set a public public key. Let PKI is equal is equal to WI. WI is kept in public and considered as the public key of the user with the identity IDI. Then it computes VI and the lambda I and the confirms equation is two if C0 multiply P is equal to RI plus lambda I multiply the P power holds. The private key is valid if the equation, if the equation holds and the vice versa uh, and the user UI stores the value in mobile device one. Then is the phase three, the server registration phase. First of all, it sets secret value. The server with identity ID J picks randomly CJ from the set as his secret value and uh, calculate the capital CJ and then submit the registration information to the KGC. Then is the partial private key extract. The KGC choose at a random RG from the set and computes the RG, ZJ, and uh, WJ, Lambda J, and uh, CJ. After all the, after all the operations, it sends the, the re registration information to the KGC. Then is the set public key. Let the PKJ equal to WJ and uh, also WJ is kept in public and considered as the public key of the server with identity IDJ. The server computes CJ and the lambda J and the converse equation is true. If, if, it, uh, if it's true and uh, it kept the secret key uh, mm -hmm on its device and stores the value. The phase four is the key agreement phase. 
the user UI offers his IDIE mobile device one and sends the information IDI C1, C2, RI, and LAMD I to the server SJ. After receiving the message, the server SJ chooses at random the key VJ from the set and computes the TJ, then sends the information to the user UI. After receiving the message, the user chooses at random the key VI from the set and computes the TI, then the user sends TI to the SJ. And the UI computes the M0 and sends it to the mobile device 2 and the mobile device 3. After receiving, receiving M0, the user offers his IDI and the pin code C1 on the mobile device 2 and uh, calculate M1 and uh, send M1 to the mobile device 1. After receiving the information M0, the user offers his identity IDI and uh, biometric information on mobile device 3 and uh, calculate the biometric feature extension information C2 and uh, calculate the M2 then send it to the mobile device one. After receiving the information of M1 and M2, the user UI calculate MI1 and MI2 and MI3 on mobile device one. Then the server SJ computes MJ1, MJ2, and MJ3 on its device. Thus, Thus, they agreed essential, essential keys for UI and SJ can be computed as SKIJ, and they are the same. The part four is the security proof. Limo one is to, uh, to prove the security of our protocol in the random Oracle module, which is the hash function H1 and H2 as two random oracles. For the security, the following lemmas are and the theorems are provided. The lemma one is two oracles are matching, both of them will be accepted and will get the same session. Get the same session key, which is distributed uniformly at random in the session key sample key, sample key. Base. And the proof is assuming that I and J are sanctioned participa participants. A is a benign adversary. I and J send a message to each other in full accordance with the protocol rules. We know if two oracles are matching, then both of them are accepted and have the same special key. Based on the random oracle machine H2, the session key are distributed uniformly since VI and VJ in the protocol are randomly selected and the M1, M2, and M3 are randomly generated. The lemma one, lemma two is assuming that the DCGH problem is intract intractable. The advantage of a type one adversary A1 against our protocol is uh, illegible. And the security proof will be accomplished through a series of queries, such as the S1 query, create query, the public key query. And due to time construction, it will not be stated here. The, spe the specific process is reflected in the full, full paper. And the lemma three is Assuming that the CDH problem is intractable, the advantage of a type 2 adversary A2 against our protocol is negligible. And the proof process, process is similar to Lima 2 and will not be repeated. The part 5 is the summary. Uh, in this paper, we have proposed a multi-factor catalyst authentication 
application key agreement protocol on elliptic curve, which avoids the limitation of the certificate list management and the key exclusion. Based on this CDH and the CDH assumption, the protocol's security is guaranteed under the MBR model. The scheme implements the multi-factor joint participation in key negotiation, where the KGC does not need to participate. If a new user is added, there is no need to update the information of all registered entities. There are, however, a number of potential directions that we can extend this week. At present, it's still a theoretical stage and needs to be further implemented and try to reduce time and communication costs. And we intend to identify potential collaborators that can assist in the implementation of our protocols in a real world setting. And uh, that's all. Thank you for listening. That's all my presentation. Thank you.